So today we're in a state that once had a sea, and you might not expect for a sea to be here. There were sea lilies, brachiopods, and trilobites about 375 million years ago. Welcome to Iowa! In today's episode, we'll be traveling to the Fossil and Prairie Center in Rockford, Iowa, where we'll meet up with members of the Mid-America Paleontological Society, or MAPS. There, we will be collecting fossils from an ancient, shallow, tropical seaway. We'll then meet up with MAPS member Jim Prislicka in order to talk about some important cephalopod fossils to Iowa. And lastly, we'll meet up with Tiffany Adrain who is the collections manager at the Museum of Natural History at the University of Iowa, in order to discuss the positive impact that amateur groups have on collections. So right now we are in Rockford, Iowa at the Rockford Prairie and Fossil Preserve. And this is a place where you can collect fossils. The fossils here are all marine and they are Upper Devonian. So this is about 375 million years ago. And the way we're going about collecting the fossils is just basic surface collecting. So I am here with the Mid-America Paleontological Society. And we're just surface collecting for different fossils. So um, I was just handed the, the snail right here. But you can see if I just bend down, the, the ground is just covered in fossils. We have brachiopods right here and these are shelled creatures. Uh, some species are still alive today. Uh, uh, brachiopod species are, not the same ones that were in the Devonian. Uh, and these are kind of like clams, but not really. They're a totally different group of animals. The way you can tell the difference is that the, the top shell and bottom shell are different shaped. However, they have symmetry on both the right and the left side. Uh, some other things that we have been finding are crinoid stems. Um, crinoids are sea lilies. They're an animal and actually not a plant. I'm going to try to find some other things here. There's lots of brachiopods. Let's see. Here's, here's another. There are different types of brachiopods. The main ones that we have been finding here are uh, a group of brachiopods called atrepids and another group of brachiopods called spirifers. And spirifer brachiopods look like they have wings on the sides of their shells and the atrepids have a, a dome shell on one half and the other shell half is, is more flat. So, so for tools for this trip, really don't need much. Really just a bag or a bucket. Uh, you can bring a rock hammer with you if you would like, uh, just to maybe loosen some things up, but it's very easy surface collecting. You can literally just pick things up from the surface like that. So no special equipment and there's also no special uh, preparation or stabilization to worry about. A helpful book of reference if you are just starting out and never collected fossils before, or if you are a kid, is Millie and Sam's Fossil Hunt by the University of Iowa Paleontological Repository and the Mid-America Paleontological Society. Okay, so I'm just I'm just picking up things that look like shells. So yeah, it can sometimes be hard to tell the difference between the rocks and the fossil, but the fossils will have a different texture than rocks. So here's just a normal rock. Here we have part of a brachiopod fossil. And you can see there's lots of ridges on this shell. This is probably an atrepid. And the rock uh, has more of a, a duller texture and it doesn't have those, those ridges on it. Um, the fossils will also probably glisten a little bit more in the sunlight than, than the dull rocks. So that's how you tell uh, the difference between a lot of these brachiopod fossils. There looks to be another one right here if I can wedge it out of the ground. Another important aspect to remember is that you cannot sell the fossils. Uh, from this site, uh, but you can uh, come in and do this this sort of surface collecting uh, for your own research or uh, just for fun, casual purposes. Uh, Rockford uh, does uh, present a, a really good place to, to go because of the variety 
variety of the fossils. Uh, they're not in matrix, so they're easy to get, for anybody to get out. The kids can get them out. They can sit in one spot and pick up a lot of fossils. Um, and it's uh, obviously free to get in. Uh, come in any time. It's open. And um, it's just a, a good, good family place. This particular one, Anacostris regulari Fenton, Fenton is uh, endemic to Iowa. It's only known to occur in the Cerro Gorda member of the Lime Creek Formation. And this particular fragment here is a piece of Sheramanticostris rancostomum. That's a zonally important aminoid species. Uh, this has worldwide distribution. We're in the um, paleontology repository at the University of Iowa. And this is the state's um, cabinet of natural history. It was uh, brought into being by um, a legislative um, enactment to keep all the fossils from the state um, geological surveys. And has grown up in the last 160 years, depending on who's worked here and what, they, what their specialties being. So we've got um, paleozoic cephalopods from all over the world. Um, we've got uh, Might not think initially we would have here, but um, the bulk of our material that's being collected by uh, the local fossil collectors is obviously going to be Midwest Paleozoic material. So, this is an example of some of this material, um, and this was collected by the Black Hawk Gem and Mineral Society. Um, they had an agreement with the um, quarry owners and permission to go into the quarries to collect as long as the material came here. So I was informed that there was one cabinet of material and now there's like two rooms of material at <laughs> <laughs> the building, uh, slightly off campus. But um, I, don't, I don't think I can find the specimen offhand, but um, it was a, an important collection because um, originally, for example, we only had one specimen, the holotype, and a couple of um, partial specimens of one particular species, um, and they found over 100 more of them, oh, wow. uh, 200 more of them. So, you know, it's done, they've done amazing, huh? amazing contributions yeah. oh. to the, um, the collections, and we actually got a project, um, some funding for a project where they curated the material themselves as well. So. All right, guys, thank you for watching this episode of 50 States of Fossils. Uh, first, we would like to thank MAPS, the Mid-America Paleontological Society, for their assistance in, in telling us where to go and also for being just great hosts for today's episode. If you'd like to learn more about their group, uh, please visit their website in the link below. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions of videos that you would like to see from Fossil, please tell us in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any fossils from Iowa that you would like to talk about, please also leave those in the comments. Also, please uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram uh, for more updates from fossils. And be sure to visit the My Fossil website at www.myfossil.org. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you out in the field. Bye! Uh. Huh?